Mahalo, mahalo kita to our beautiful community and our listeners, our viewers who are tuning in today. Thank you, thank you so, so much for tuning in. We are going to cross over to Dunedin. That's right. We've got a, a special guest tuning in live from Dunedin from uh, Forsyth Bar Stadium at the Students Vaccination Clinic. We've got Melissa Lama, who is currently the University of Pacific Island Students Association president. She is studying a Master of Business Administration, a proud mother of two, uh, Tongan heritage, and one of the project leads of the vaccination clinic alongside Tirupu Maori Tumuaki and the Kayaka Clinic. Malo Elelei, Malo Opito, Malo Taulava, Malo Laumalia, Melissa. Malo Lele, Malo Taulava. Thank you so much for tuning in. I, I love the background. Can you tell us what, what's going on at the uh, Forsyth Bar Stadium today? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So um, at the moment, we've got a, a pop-up vaccination clinic happening at the Forsyth Bar, as mentioned, specifically to target uh, students and young people in the North Dunedin, sort of around the university area uh, for the ages 18 to 30. So we recognise that uh, within our Māori and Pacifica people being priorities in this age group of needing to get vaccinated, we uh, also recognise we had other students around that age group who hadn't actually been vaccinated. So we've come together, uh, my, uh, well, the Pacific Island students and the Māori students to mobilise and create our own space uh, mm. to have this, yeah. Wow. And what is the response like from our students so far? Actually, not too bad. So yesterday's clinic, um, we're only doing it for two days. So yesterday we um, we had it open from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And uh, students being students didn't start turning up till about, you know, we got a few people at 9, but it only really started to come in around 12 p.m. So today we made the decision yesterday to change it to 12 p.m. today to 7 p.m. And um, I'm glad we did that because within the two hours, we saw close to 800 students come in. So... It was a good decision to change it, yeah. Wow. Now, is this the first time you, you, you're you doing this? Did you do like a testing station for a student in the first and the second lockdown? No, we didn't. So um, during that time, testing stations were available around uni. So there wasn't a need to sort of do that. And it was open to everybody. Um, but in regards to vaccinations, there wasn't really much uh, in the North Dunedin area uh, for students besides Meridian Mall. Um, we did have vaccination clinics in South Dunedin for a drive through that was run by Takaika at the Edgar Stadium. Then we have the Pacific Trust Otago Clinic uh, that's mm -hmm. happening at the moment. Um, but our students don't all have cars, so accessibility wasn't an option uh, for them. So uh, we wow. wanted to bring it closer to them, and we have. Um, I think the good thing about this vaccination clinic is, you know, we could have easily just done the clinic for Basvika and Māori, but we decided to um, create a to clinic that's totally safe, for everybody, yeah. Mm. So that's Melissa, nice. leading up and planning the uh, the clinic, what have been some of the challenges that you face organizing this vaccination clinic for your students? Yeah, look, I I, I really don't want to take away from from what we've got here by mentioning some of the the barriers we had to go through, but mm. I I think um, probably just trying to be heard uh, within certain spaces around around the university, to be honest, but in saying that, they've got their own reasons as to why they do things in certain ways, so 
If there's anything, the, the barriers that we encountered only uh, encouraged us to mobilize to do our own thing. So, you know, as a sign to Pacific youth and students out there, um, we don't always have to wait around for something to happen. We can do it ourselves. Um, so that's probably been the barrier. The positive of the barriers is, is, is the confidence and, you know, the validation that actually we, we end up helping our own people at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, and, and for you being in a you know front line, um, how are you feeling? Like, you know, you, you've got two kids, you've got two beautiful children, and, and you're exposing yourself to people who might be carrying the virus and who might be affected. How are you feeling about that, Melissa? Yeah, oh, look, I've been brought up by my mom and, and you know, my oh. dad and my family to, to always look at the good things that we have. And if we have the capacity, then, you know, think about people beyond yourself. And so I think for me, I've been... Um, fortunate to have the leadership role that I have and when you carry roles like that there's also an accountability on you to uh, ensure that no one gets left behind us so that's what I kind of carry with me and it's good my husband's really understanding mm. I've always been like this so he was not surprised that I was gonna um, put effort into this but yeah it is I am mindful of that but you know I follow the regulations when you get home you know get dressed I mean look I put your clothes in the washing and you know look around, uh, practice all the things, the hygiene stuff that can ensure no one gets sick. So, yeah. Thanks, Melissa. I'm aware that today's the last day for this clinic. If, yep. if the demand from the students, you know, to come back to you and say, hey, can we do this again? Are you willing to do it again? Yeah, so we. Uh, this is a sort of a pilot for us because in six weeks' time, we will bring it back again to do the second uh, dosage for our students. So um, we're not just going to do one and then be like, go find somewhere else to go. Um, we will come back again in six weeks and do the same. Not sure if it'll be here at the Forsyth, hopefully on, on university campus, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, we definitely will come back. I think the most important thing to remember for us is um, how well we do and practice our service now will ensure they'll come back to us in the next, next round. So I told all my volunteers, like, keep the smiles, keep the positive attitude and they'll come back again. Yeah. Nice, Melissa. What are some of the learnings from this clinic? that you think you can work on or build on, uh, you know, in the next, in the second, um, is it second run of clinic? Yeah, I think definitely um, uh, probably the, the strategy, maybe our comp strategy for sure on the student mm. side. If we had a bit more time and turnover, we probably would have done something a bit more robust, but probably comms and um, the operational stuff. So we had just over 300 volunteers. We've got a call centre and then we have marshalling security. We have uh, support people. Uh, so probably just and just upsca you know, upscaling them from the learnings that we've had this round. Um, but, you know, mm. our students pull through and it's a clear sign that they want to help and support the course. Yeah. And have, have, have some members of your Pacific Island Students Association been trained to, you know, to deliver vaccination? Yeah. So, wow. so we were hoping that... Um, we probably wouldn't have gone as far as to deliver vaccinations, but with some of our medical students, so fourth year mm -hmm. up medical students and our last year pharmacy students, we were hoping that they'll be able to do the drawing of the vaccinations for our nurses. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, with the strict guidelines around who can do that, we weren't able to. But what we've done is brought those health professional students into the sort of admin stuff. So they're, they're still around the space. Um, mm -hmm. So the students have been a part of that, that whole clinic practice alongside Takaika. So we're really grateful that they've allowed that opportunity. Yeah. And are you getting much support from the district health board or what would you like to see uh, some sort of support from the community to make sure that the, the next clinic will, um, you know, will, will go well? Yeah, look, I think um, I've left sort of the DHB of issue of health stuff to Takaika, the medical centre. I feel like as a clinician, they know exactly uh, what's required in that area. But I think um, more for me to the DHB and the Ministry of Health, it would probably just be more accessible uh, comms around the symptoms and all that stuff like I know you can go on the website mm -hmm. but as young people I, I feel like the, the narrative and language can be a bit more friendlier a bit more layman a bit more community um, you know a, a bit more of a community approach where um, the average Joe or people who are not medical people can understand it a bit better so that would be my only advice um, but also you know I know you have policies and legislations, but uh, our young people want to contribute to the decision making around how these vaccination hubs are rolled out. So if there's any opportunity to include the ideas, I really encourage you to do so because we wouldn't have got to this point had they not done that. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. 
What about some support from our local church community, uh, Melissa? Oh, oh man, they've been the best, uh, especially or Pacific Trust Otago, Well South, and our Pacific and Māori University staff. Um, they've just been, they trust the voices of our young people. That's the best thing. Um, and they, even though I know I could be a bit too much for them, there's still the opportunity to, to grow in the space. So our community has shown up for us big time. And, and, and so this wouldn't have happened without them. But I just want to say one thing, the beauty of Dunedin community is that uh, a lot of the locals don't have children who come to the uni because, you know, they're all older and left, but they still come and support and, you know, bring food for us, even though none of them are their kids. So that's mm. the beauty of the community that we have here. Yeah. Speaking of those students from outside of Otago, how is your health and well-being? You know, living away from their families. Yeah, I think I think from the last lockdown, there was a bit of like trauma in terms of, um, you know, they would want to go home, right? They really want to mm. go home. They're going to be a lockdown. They'd rather be with their families. But you know, the encouragement we're trying to give them is, you know, by looking after your own health, um, asking for the support that you require from the uni and the partial care, um, and getting your vaccination is is just as much support for them. You know, you looking, what you doing your bit to stay healthy and well. And I, I feel for them because, you know, they think about their parents and their jobs. As specific people, we can't help but be like that. So um, mm. we just, you know, have that sense of community as much as we can under level four restrictions for each other. Um, but yeah, that's our, that's our main focus at the moment. Thank you so much, Melissa. Uh, one that's final right. question is, any, any advice or any message for our young people who are still saying, I'm not sure whether I should get vaccinated or is a mark of the peace or is a killer? What would yeah. you have to say to them? Oh, look, um, I know as, as young people, uh, look, it's, it's been happening everywhere. We had it here. Uh, it's quite pronounced here and on social media. But um, all I have to say to you is, is uh, you know, these obviously everyone has religious reasons. Everyone thinks the government's there to, I don't know, um, get rid of our people or try to dilute our culture or something to these vaccinations. But um, if we just focus in on, on what we could do collaboratively uh, as a community to, to keep each other safe, it's kind of like the best thing we can do for each other right now. And um, I almost feel like... Um, as young people, it's I always want them to like look at the the, the pra- like the things that are happening in Fiji, for example. When mm. people start saying that COVID doesn't exist or that you don't need the vaccination, it's like, have you forgotten that we have people back in the islands who, uh, you know, actively go through COVID and Delta, or or you know, people are mm-hmm. dying. And so it's like you cannot tell me that just because you have these beliefs that this is not an actual real thing happening at the moment. But to you two who are for the vaccinations, and uh, I would suggest to people to focus on those people, meaning mm. uh, get them in, get them vaccinated, and then the hope is that they'll turn and, and share their good experience or share what they went through, whether it was good or bad. And then hopefully we can overlap that uh, that narrative that we see, the misinformation that we see. Um, I don't encourage us to, you know, to shame the anti-vaxxers, I feel like if we just focus on what we're trying to do and hype mm. people through the way, you know, because they never turn up and speak when you ask them into their face or when you go on a Zoom and you're like, you know, we say energy we saw on social media, but mm. anyway, <laughs> it's like Thanks, nowhere to be found, but yeah. Yes. Thanks, Melissa. Life. How it's do right. you feel about the whole passport issue when you heard about what happened, the situation yeah. in Bay of Plenty? Yeah, look, it just reminds me that uh, every DHB is different. Huh? And this is where um, I feel like there has to be uh, like a, not a review, but I'm also an a internal review on some of our DHBs around their practices. And like, um, you know, where where is their, their, mm. uh, like their people in power in terms of, like who lets that go through for me? You know, like whose idea was it to sign off? For example, if we're talking specifically about the Bay of Plenty DHB, who specifically allowed that practice? And then I would be looking at their level of cultural intelligence and cultural competency because if it comes from the from the top down and that's the standard practice, there's no point in just attacking the people we ask for it. It's like they would have been directed by someone. And so I don't know. I'm really disappointed. Um, I had many people in our community um, message me and say, "Is this true?" And mm-hmm. I see this. And I rang and explained that that's not standard practice. It's not a must. I was more disappointed they turned them away. Like, mm. we shouldn't come here with no ID. We don't turn them away. We just have to make sure that we've heard them correctly when we're asking for their names. Yeah. Um, 
but to hear that they turn them away, I'm like, yeah, that's that's there's got to be some, um, I guess, consequences for that type of practice to be allowed. So I'll be watching that closely, to be honest, because it sets the precedence for other DHBs to not follow. Mm. Yeah, so you know, that's my perspective, yeah. Absolutely. Well, what a confident leader you are. Thank you so much, Melissa. And I wish you all the best. I, you know, we pray, we continue to pray for you and your team. And we hope that, you know, in the second um, clinic, um, everything will go well. Any final yeah. comments? You know, you can shout out to your your family, your, your children uh, and your, your husband and yeah. your and your and your kid, um, you know, in your final. Yeah. No, I just want to yeah, say hi to my family and friends. I'm sure they're sick of me already uh, in my voice, but um, I just want to give acknowledgement to all our families and, and um, community going through the current COVID case in Auckland uh, and in Wellington. Uh, yes, we're in Dunedin and yes, we're not in the in the red zone at the moment, but you know, we are thinking of you and this is our way of showing respect by making sure that we are getting vaccinated and doing our part. So we are thinking of you. Our prayers are sent to you all and um, yeah, let's hope we get out of this soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I must say that the University of Otago and um, you know, Te Ropu Māori, Tumuaki and Te Kayaka Clinic are very, very blessed to have a confident leader like you, Melissa. Thank you so much for the time that you took, you know, um, for taking the time out to come and share about the awesome work that you do, the vaccination clinic for all our students. And I hope to see you in the second round. From Manuela Tua, yeah, may God bless you. And Thanks. yeah, we'll, we'll catch up again. Hello, Pito. Bye. Hello, Pito. Bye, bye. Wow, what a beautiful uh, Dalanoa and a quarter from uh, the project lead of the vaccination clinic for students at the University of Auckland. Wow, wow, man. I'm, you know, I'm so impressed, and I, um, I, I and I love the fact that uh, we've got our young leaders, you know, to lead this project because we are the future of of the Pacific community here in our Aotearoa. And you know, in the whole world. So if I for coming on the show to share about the awesome work that you guys do um in the need and yeah, Ole buying a more more now. That is the first part of our um Dalanoa today. Um our next guest is we I have a Dana Ray Datafu to Ipolotu from ProCare. She is a half coach and she will have um a Dalanoa about. Her role, you know, during the lo- uh, level four lockdown and how she is still supporting, how she is still working as an essential or frontline worker to support our Pacific community. I'll be right back.